Good evening, everyone, um, and thank you very much for joining us on another Discover Wildlife evening. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Dan Free, and I'm the General Manager here at Wildlife Worldwide uh, and the Travelling Naturalist. Now, this evening, I have the absolute pleasure uh, to be joined by my good friend, Robin Smith. Um, Robin is our expert on Columbia, and with his partner, Claudia, uh, operates our trips out there for us. Um, as many of you will know, uh, Columbia is an incredible birding destination and it's got a fabulous repu you know, reputation, but it's also incredible for mammals. And, and Robin and his partner, Claudia, have, have been instrumental in designing some super itineraries for, for mammals uh, for us over the last couple of years. And uh, this evening, we're gonna be hearing about both the, the birding trips and the mammal-based trips. Um, as ever, uh, at the end of the talk, we will have a Q&A um, and you'll be able to put your questions to Robin. Uh, you can either post them in the chat or in the Q&A section, um, just at the bottom of your screen. Uh, there will also be a poll um, where you will have the opportunity to request more details on any of the trips that we offer uh, that may be of interest. Uh, so do look out for that. Um, but with that, I think I will pass over to Robin. Um, Robin, are you good to go? Yes, thank you, Dan. Good man. Over to you. I'll speak to you in a bit. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Rob. Um, thank you very much for, for joining me this evening. Um, I'm going to talk, talk you through um, as much as I can cover in, in about 40 minutes. Um, there's, um, there's, there's lots to discuss. Um, Colombia is a, is a large country. It's one of the most bio biodiverse countries in, in the world. And um, often people's first impressions, as you can see from this opening slide, is it, it's really a strikingly beautiful country. Um, as we travel through on different tours, no matter which tour, you're guaranteed um, incredible, incredible scenery. Um, it's uh, it's it's really a naturalist's uh, paradise, and uh, and I want to mention also that it's it's a really welcome, colourful, friendly destination. Colombia obviously has had its troubles in the past. Um, it's a country the size of France and Germany combined. Um, much of it is is green according to the FCO advisory, but some of it some there are some places in the country that are still. Um, shall we say off limits? Uh, we obviously don't travel in those. Uh, we stick to the green areas on the tours uh, that we operate. Um, but it's it's a wonderful, friendly, welcoming country, and I would uh, I would encourage anyone to visit uh, should you have the opportunity. Um, often we encounter scenes like this on tour, um, and um, friendly locals who are more inquisitive about what we're doing, why we have scopes, why we've got binoculars around our necks, and so on. Um, it's it, it's just fun. It's always fun on tour. Uh, so why is is Colombia such a such a biodiverse country, and and, and what can we expect uh, when we visit? So it, it, there's more there's more bird species in Colombia than than any other country in the world, approaching two thousand species and counting. Uh, there's close to five hundred species of mammals over 1,300 species of reptile and amphibian and an untold number of plants uh, with around 4,000 species of orchid alone, uh, around 1,500 of which are, are thought to be endemic. And there's new discoveries being made all the time. Uh, there was a primate not so long ago um, described uh, for the first time to science and, and uh, new bird discoveries. I'm not talking about splits here. These are, these are, these are new species that have been discovered. Um, so it's a really exciting place um, from a wildlife perspective. Um, just to give you a, a bit of an introduction as to uh, where Colombia sits in South America, as you can see here, we have the Isthmus of Panama, which runs into Colombia. And it's, um, it, it has this uh, Pacific coast here and the, the Caribbean coast as well. These brown regions here are the Andes, which are the, uh, the northernmost point of the Andes in South America. And as you can see here, uh, just about, they, they split into three separate ranges um, in Colombia, which allows for a, a wealth of, um, of, of, of habitats and aspects, which really drives biodiversity. And out in the east here, we've got the open Janos Plains and the um, 
And this, this area here in the south is all Amazonia. So here, this slide just gives you a, 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 a sort of clear picture as to, as to these, these, these um, large biomes that we're dealing with in, in Colombia. This northern region here, which is the Caribbean coast, which is noted for dry forests, and the Santa Marta mountain range, which is separate from the, the, the main body of the Andes and uh, is a real uh, location of, 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 of endemism. And the Pacific coast here, known as the Choco biogeographic region, is one of the wettest places in the world, but it's also one of the most uh, rich in terms of biodiversity. The green, uh, sorry, the, the blue here is the, is the Andean region. This is known as Los Llanos in Colombia. And um, this, is, uh, this is part of the Orinoco River Basin. And the green here, as I said, is the Amazonian River Basin. So it's really this, uh, this mosaic of, of, of habitats that really drives the, the, the rich biodiversity that's to be found within, within Colombia's borders. So uh, I have a lot to pack into, uh, into a short time. I'm going to highlight three tours that, um, that we operate um, for wildlife worldwide. And I'm going to kick off with a Columbia bird photography tour. Unfortunately, I don't have time to run through every, every step of the tour, but I've sort of cherry picked and highlighted some locations that we visit and species that we target. Um, and, and you don't need a camera as big as this, by the way, if, you, if you're keen to, to do the bird photography tour. It's uh, just a, a willingness to, to, to take lots of photos of spectacular birds. Um, so this tour, uh, we visit uh, all three ranges of, 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 all three branches, I should say, of, of Colombia's Andes. This Western branch here, this central branch, and the Eastern branch as well. And we start the tour in the West near the city of Cali. Um, we stay in a simple guest house lodge. Uh, we have the whole place to ourselves. It is, it is simple, it's, it's not luxurious, but we, we stay here really because the lodge is situated in its own private reserve. It's, filled, uh, it's, it's surrounded by its own private gardens as well, which are packed full of hummingbird sugar feeders and tanager fruit feeders. And it's these feeders and the, um, and the visiting birds um, that really allow us to, to get close to spectacular species like this saffron, Crown tanager, golden tanager, stunning species uh, that we can we can um, lure into into nice perch positions for photography. Um, in in some other nearby reserves that we'll visit during our time here, we can look for purplish mantle tanager, another absolutely spectacular bird. But perhaps the 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 star of our first few days uh, in these Western Andes is the the absolutely stunning and aptly named multicolored tanager, an endemic uh, species to Colombia, and one of the real highlights of, of these, uh, these opening days on the tour. Uh, we'll also be looking for uh, sort of iconic species like this uh, crimson rump toucanet, and there'll be the opportunity to, to search for owls and photograph owls in the evening. This is a white-throated screech owl. Throughout, our, uh, throughout the tour, uh, hummingbirds will be a feature um, in every location that we visit, and we'll make a point of visiting hummingbird gardens where they're coming into fruit uh, to sugar feeders. Um, so species like this long-tailed sylph and the spectacular ruby topaz hummingbird with that incredible golden bib. Um, Moving on, we'll, we'll stay in one of my favorite hotels in all of Colombia, um, Hotel Termales del Ruiz, uh, which is perched in the central Andes of, of, the, of the country. And um, as you can see, it, it affords absolutely spectacular views looking down the valley. And if you look down to the bottom right of this picture, you'll see a, a, a swimming pool. And you, you might wonder what, what, what a swimming pool is doing at um, 2,600 meters, it might be a bit chilly, but actually this is a, uh, uh, an active 
um, geothermal region. So this pool is actually collecting natural thermal uh, spring water and they, they funnel it down into these pools. And I can tell you there's, there's, there's no better way to end a day after you've been out in the field photographing uh, high altitude hummingbirds than taking a beer down to that pool or a glass of wine and warming up in the, in the, in the lovely thermal waters with, uh, with the views and hummingbirds whizzing around your head. There's, it's an extremely special place. And as I say, one of my favorite places to, to visit. Um, after our simple guest house, it's obviously nice to, to be in a more lux luxurious setting as well. So there's, there's added bonuses here. And there's a shot of the of the pools with the surrounding uh, the surrounding elfin forests. Um, wide angle lenses will certainly be in use in this area. The, the scenery really is stunning uh, in these in these central Andes. And as I say, there's there's a wealth of hummingbirds here. The, this is um, rainbow bearded thornbill, which is one of the real star hummingbirds of 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 the of the hummingbird gardens around around this lodge. And as you can see, we can get quite close to these, uh, these ma magnificent little, little hummers. But one of the real stars, perhaps the star of the, of the central Andes is one of my favorite hummingbirds, uh, the fantastic Buffy Helmet Crest, uh, which, is, um, which is not only endemic to Colombia, it's endemic to these central Andes. It's, it's a really extremely specialized high altitude hummingbird found only above about three and a half thousand meters. So we, we make a special effort to go up into these high climbs uh, and we do, we'll do that once or, or perhaps twice on the tour to hope uh, to, to get some stunning images of, of, of the, this, this special little hummer. And I should say all the pictures um, that you're seeing on this, on this uh, talk are, are mostly taken by myself, but, but more importantly, they're, um, they're, they give an indication of what's possible. These aren't, these aren't um, shutter stock or stock images. These are, these are the photos that are taken by a relatively mediocre photographer on tour. Um, moving on, we, we, we spend time in, in a colonial uh, town of Hardin. Um, it's a wonderful setting. Uh, it, it gives a real taste of, of, of Colombian life. And um, it gives an opportunity for us at the end of a day's photography to sit around the, the, the central plaza with a coffee or a beer and just soak up Colombian life and just people watch to our heart's content. The coffee is fantastic. Um, Colombian coffee, in my opinion, is, is the best in the world without any shadow of a doubt. Um, but perhaps, well, the main reason for visiting this particular spot is uh, is because it just near town there's there's a lek um, of the fantastic Andean cock of the rock, which is a, a jackdaw sized member of the Kotinga family. This is the male that we're seeing here. And, and these birds twice a day visit these lecking sites where the males will uh, dance and strut their stuff in the hope that a female will turn up. And we'll have a an a couple of opportunities to shoot these uh, these spectacular birds at this lek, and it's one of the most uh, active Andean cock of the rock leks in all of South America. Um, and I should say it's it's extremely accessible. Most uh, these these Andean cock of the rocks they love to lek in in steep sided ravines with fast flowing uh, white water at the bottom. Um, thankfully, this one's just just outside Hardin. Yes, it's on a steep slope, but it's not steep for us, and it's accessible, and we can uh, hopefully get wonderful pictures of of this fantastic bird, an icon of the Andes. Uh, we'll also spend a day in four by fours, visiting some reserves above the town. Uh, the scenery is absolutely spectacular. Wonderful cloud forests. Here we'll be hoping to see the endemic um, yellow-eared parrot, uh, which is an icon of conservation in Colombia. And we'll also hopefully uh, encounter wonderful species like this Andean motmot and crimson mantle woodpecker. And there's also a, an ampitter, I should say, feeding station where we can hopefully shoot species like this chestnut-naped ampitter.
And there'll be one or two other um, opportunities to shoot antlers on the tour in a reserve called Rio Blanco as well, another famous reserve known, well known for its, for its ant pitters. So we get to, not only the chance to shoot the colorful species, but also the hard to see ones as well. And of course, um, we'll get the opportunity for the incomparable sword-billed hummingbird, the, the bird with the, uh, the longest bill um, of, any, of any bird in, in, in the world um, in terms proportionate to its body size, I should say. Um, an absolute stunning bird, and we'll have one or two opportunities to to, to photograph that throughout the tour. Um, I put this slide in because um, this is one of my favourite raptors, um, the ornate hawk eagle. Um, it's really just there just to say um, that there's always, there's on these tours, there's always an unexpected species, an unexpected sighting, and an unexpected opportunity, and it may be an ornate hawk eagle. Equally, it could be a scene that you just come across by chance, like this boa who, that had um, caught, a, caught a hummingbird. Um, so there's, there's always surprises along the way. So that's, uh, that's, the, that's the bird photography, and we're going to quickly move on to Colombia's rare mammals. Now, I should, before I start, uh, I'll tell you that this is a more adventurous option. Some of the accommodation is simple. There's some shared rooms. Um, so full disclosure, this is really for people that really want to, to see the species that, are, that we target on this tour. Um, it's a tour that we uh, will we'll focus on the Eastern Andes here and also the Central Andes, but we'll also spend a bit of time in some other locations as well, looking for, for other species that I'll highlight in a moment. So we start off in Bogota. Um, we have a night here to acclimatize because we're flying into about 2,600 meters. So we have a night there to acclimatize. And as soon as we can, we'll be out of the city in four by fours. And um, we'll be heading into the wonderful Chingaza National Park, which is one of the most beautiful um, reserves in all Colombia. It's, a, it's in the Paramo, which is a... <coughs> A habitat that's above the tree line, um, sort of a high altitude tropical savanna. It's completely unique, and Colombia um, has has the most paramo of any country in in in, in South America. Um, it's it's noteworthy for these for its for its flora, and in particular these Espaletia plants, which which look like palms in this instance. They grow very tall over many 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 decades and um, rather than plants though they're they're actually members of the of the sunflower family and there's several species of, of these espaletia um, throughout the park and the paramo systems of colombia as i say the, the accommodation is simple um, we do our best to make it as as comfortable as possible but we're really here um, we're really here because of the scenery and the 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 habitat um, that this reserve um, holds, and it's one of the um, it, it, it's it's perhaps the the most concentrated uh, population of of Andean bear or spectacle bear in in all of the Andes. Um, so we'll spend time on the tour scanning these open valleys, looking for signs of bear, and um, this is our real main focus whilst we're, we're up in, in Chingaza, um, scanning these beautiful valleys with the Espaletia. And as we do so, we'll, we'll, we'll come across some bird life of, of, the, of the reserve, like this Ruford brow conebill. And also um, another, another helmet crest, the, the magnificent green bearded helmet crest, which was split from, uh, from uh, Buffy helmet crest a few years ago, it, arguably more beautiful and, and, and certainly harder to see this one. As we, as we traverse the, uh, the park, we'll no doubt come across white-tailed deer, a common, a common mammal that we'll, we'll no doubt see. Um, but the real focus of these days is to find our, our, our key target, which is, is spectacle bear or Andean bear. Um, as I say, the, the concentration of bears in this park is, 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 is exceptional, 
and we stand an excellent chance. Although, of course, when you're looking for an elusive species like a spectacle bear, there are no guarantees, but, um, but the chances are very good. I'll leave you with this picture just for a second. So after our time in the, in the high Eastern Andes looking for bears, we'll come down slope and to the edge of the Janos Plains, much warmer, and we'll have a few nights to warm up and soak in some, um, some primates. Again, we'll be looking for the wonderful marked ornate TT and the super Brumbax night monkey, uh, both of these species endemic, and we, have, we stand an excellent chance of seeing both. Um, there's also opportunities to see another iconic mammal, um, the wonderful giant anteater. And having, having spent some time on the edge of the eastern Janos Plains, we'll move into the central Andes, where we'll have opportunities to see more um, endemic birds like the critically endangered Calcaguan and the stunning red rough root crow. But these are real sideshows on this tour. We're, we're really we're back on the mammal trail and here we actually will be walking into our next reserve. This is, uh, this is a reserve that's um, remote and there's no road access. So we walk in and it takes around uh, three hours to walk through a spectacular forested trail. Um, we take it nice and easy. We'd let the horses uh, do all the hard work in terms of taking our luggage. But yeah, it's a bit different, this one. Um, we're, really, we're really hiking into a, into, into, into a wonderful reserve um, that few other people visit. And uh, it's a real opportunity for an adventurous uh, soul to, to get out there, really, and, uh, and explore a, a part of Colombia that, that few tourists uh, ever, will ever see. We'll spend some time just taking it easy on the trail, having a late morning coffee uh, by the, the rushing mountain streams, and we'll hopefully see another icon of the Andes, the, the wonderful torrent duck. Um, uh, before too long, we'll reach our next lodge. And again, it's similar to the, to, the, to the bear lodge. It's very simple, but we have wonderful hosts who will put on excellent spreads for us. The food is delicious. It's one of the the, the most wonderful kitchens in, <laughs> for me in all of Colombia. And uh, they serve lovely hearty meals, which we'll need because we'll be, we'll be walking out from the lodge on a daily basis in search of our, our, our target here. It's an absolutely stunning location um, with these, these cloud forests and open, open, uh, open areas, which will be, um, will be, sort of scouting out over the coming days. We'll have opportunities to take in the orchid moss clad forest. This is a corner of Colombia that, as I say, few people visit. It's one of my favorite forests in, in the whole country. Um, there's wonderful waterfalls um, and it's just a spectacular spot. Um, whilst we're there, we have opportunities to see some other mammals like this Tyra and the elusive and difficult to view uh, Western mountain Kuwati as well is also a possibility. However, our main target is the owner of this, this uh, print. And as, as I say, we're scanning these, these uh, forest fringes and, and looking for sign of our, of, our, uh, of our quarry. And it's this wonderful creature, the, um, the striking mountain tapia. It's just a, an absolutely uh, unique animal. Um, some of you may have seen the, the, its cousin, the Brazilian tapir. Um, but the mountain tapir, is, in my view, it's, it's, it's just so striking with those wonderful white lips and, and this sort of jet black uh, coat. It's, it's, it's a stunning animal. And uh, we'll, really, we'll really work hard to, 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 to hopefully find and, uh, and observe this elusive um, mountain. Yeah, there we go. So after we've uh, had a few nights uh, searching for mountain tapir, we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll have a, a well-earned, um, luxurious stay in a traditional hacienda. Um, 
it's a stunning, stunning place with opulent gardens. Um, it's a great place just to degas after our after our uh, simple lodge up in the mountains. Um, as I say, the gardens are just spectacular with these towering palms, wonderful trees. Um, anyone who's keen to do some light birding is 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 more than welcome to do so in these gardens. There's more endemics here, like greyish piculet and and near endemics like um, um, bar crested antshrike and others. So there's lots to lots of bird life to keep us occupied if you if you don't want to just sit around the pool and and uh, perhaps drink a cocktail, for example. And as as I say, it's a very very comfortable place to to spend a, a night or two. So that's um, that's the adventurous um, rare mammals, and this moves me on to the next tour that I'm going to cover, which is Colombia's rare primates. Now, if any of you were thinking on the previous tour, well, I'm just not up for the for for a shared uh, a shared bedroom um, with shared showers. I quite understand this this tour is all en suite. Um, there's no sharing. There's none of that. And um, so it's, it, and it's also, um, it's also a tour where the target species are, are not quite as elusive, shall we say. Um, we have um, the opportunity to see as many as 15 different uh, species of primate on the tour, even more if you do the pre-tour extension. Um, and, and we have a good, a really good chance of seeing upward of 75% of those, of those species. So, um, and a host of other wildlife along the way. So it's a, it's, it's a, it, it's a bit less sort of, um, it's more, less hit or miss. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so this particular tour, uh, we spend time on the transition between the Andes and, and, and the Amazon and the Andes and the, the Orinoco uh, River Basin, this transition region here. We also have time in the Magdalena Valley the valley that's uh, between the East and Central Andes. And also we spend time up in the North uh, on the Caribbean coast at the end of the tour in the dry forest of that region. So it's a real mix of habitats and, and we cover a lot of the country um, on this particular tour. The tour, uh, most of the ex excursions are on foot. Uh, they're not desperately uh, strenuous or anything like that, mostly on for the main tour, I should say. Um, they're more or less on, on pretty um, uh, level ground for the most part. And we spend sort of um, one and a half, two hours, uh, perhaps three hours at the most on excursions, but gently searching forested trails. Um, it's not desperately strenuous unless you do the pre-tour extension, which I'll, I'll mention a little later. And we'll be looking again for the wonderful ornate TT, another, uh, this endemic species that we can find on the edge of the, the Janos Plains. And again, we'll have chances of uh, giant anteater here as well, as well as uh, the magnificent little southern tamandua, the smaller cousin of the giant anteater. And again, we'll have the opportunity to see Brumbach's night monkey, this endemic and a real favorite of mine. I just think they're such characters. We know some, uh, some holes, some nest holes of this species. So we, we stand to, to, to get really good views of them. One of the main targets when we're in the Magdalena Valley and the humid lowland forest that we'll be exploring is the um, tongue twisting uh, um, well, it's, it has a couple of names. One is white-footed tamarind, which is, is a lot easier. And the other is silvery brown bare-faced tamarind, a bit of a mouthful. But it's a wonderful tamarind that uh, is found in family, family troops. And we stand to get good views of this, uh, this, this unique species to Colombia. It can be seen nowhere else other than in the Magdalena Valley. And as we search, we'll no doubt come across some some special birds of the area as well, like this um, golden-headed mannequin. This area is really fantastic for mannequins. There's five species that we can find in, in the Magdalena forests. Uh, we'll spend time in a, a wonderful private reserve um, in, in the Magdalena Valley. 
uh, we'll most likely have the whole reserve to ourselves because there's only a few rooms uh, that can that can um, just about hold a, a full group. Um, so we'll we'll have the reserve to ourselves, and uh, there'll be more iconic birds like this um, blue-billed curassow, um, which is probably this is the best place to see this critically endangered curassow. They're they're common around the the lodge of the reserve. Uh, again, we'll be on forested trails, um, scouting for for primates. And our main primate target here is the um, variegated spider monkey, which shares it, it shares a it sort of creeps into Venezuela, but the vast majority of its uh, distribution is found within Colombia. They're real. Um, you know they're they're so comfortable up in the high canopy. It's, it's, it's such great creatures to to observe, and hopefully we'll find a, a family troop and we can spend, you know, often spend an hour or even more with them, just uh, just just soaking it up. Again, more spectacular birds here in this area, like this citron throated toucan, a toucan that you know is 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 perhaps. Uh, less well known, but I, I think the colors on this this particular species are quite striking. And there's more endemic birds here as well, like the beautiful woodpecker. And uh, we have lots of opportunities uh, whilst we're in this reserve to uh, to do some night spotlighting. One of the more common species that we hope to see is is this uh, brown-eared woolly opossum. And there's some other um, other other nocturnal targets like the grey-handed night monkey, another um, another special primate of these uh, these Magdalena forests. Owls will certainly be on the menu. Um, this is a vermiculated screech owl, and we'll also be hoping to see the magnificent uh, crested owl as well. So we finished the tour uh, up on the. The Caribbean um, coastal dry forests. It's as you can see from this slide. It's just a, a, a spectacular, um, a spectacular location, and we spend time in in Tyrona National Park, which is one of uh, the more popular national parks in Colombia, uh, for good reason. Um, and we spend a few nights in in just you know just real sort of luxurious bliss with a lovely um, beach lodge with a pool and views just near the national park. We're practically guaranteed to see this, uh, these Colombian red howler monkeys in the park. They're, they're quite common along with, um, with our main target here, which is the, the endemic and charismatic Cosmotop tamarind, and they're actually quite common because um, because Tyrona receives a number of visitors every day. Uh, the tamarinds are a pretty habituated, so we stand an excellent chance of, of of finding a troop. And when you do, they can they can come quite close and afford uh, good good opportunities to take photos. And we'll hope to 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 find and photograph these uh, these wonderful little tamarinds. Another, another shot of the cotton tops, a real favorite. <laughs> so yeah, um, this slide is, um, this is myself with the wonderful Kate Humble. Um, this is the last tour I did before we went into lockdown back in March, 2020. I had the pleasure of, of traveling and guiding Kate. And she, um, she was on the trail of mountain tapir and, and um, an Andean bear. And this is just after we'd, we'd seen and observed a, a mother and two cubs, um, Andean bear. Um, it was a great sighting. It reminds me of great times. Um, it's been a long time since I've been on tour and uh, it's been, been a tough year, but I just can't wait to get out again and lead tours and get out amongst the wildlife of Colombia because it's just so, so magnificent. And Kate is hoping to, um, hoping to lead this tour. Um, which is scheduled towards the back end of the year. And, and we hope to put on other departures for, to see uh, Colombia's rare mammals and Colombia's rare primates as well. 
I mentioned there was an extension for this tour. It's actually a pre-tour extension. It's, um, it's a little more adventurous than the main tour um, because we're right in the far south of the country. And we're looking for more endemic primates like this uh, black-handed TT. Um, we also do a strenuous hike, or a one-day hike, it, and it is, it is, um, uh, this is a, you know, a full day's hike, is there's, there's no, uh, there's no two ways about it, in a spectacular cloud forest reserve. We walk for about two to three hours into good cloud forest, primary forest, and we're hoping to find the critically endangered Colombian woolly monkey. Um, it's a really tough, it's a really tough primate. It's a hard day. And uh, hopefully we can get views of this, this, uh, this rare primate that very few people have seen. And we also have a day or two looking for uh, one of my absolute favorite primates. And one of the reasons that we actually decided to, um, to work on these primate tours was this particular species, the critically endangered Kakita titi. Um, there's thought to be only around 250 um, of these, these uh, Kakitatiti left in the wild. Uh, their habitat is, is extremely threatened. And um, yeah, we put these primate tours together in the hope that we can bring tourists to these places. Um, we can get a buzz um, and show uh, and, and put value on these habitats and um, take people to see these rare monkeys and and if we can do that we can potentially save this this particular species in particular because it's um you know it's under such threat and if we can get eyes on this and get the local communities uh involved and and really um and really engaged with these these special forests that hold these absolutely unique uh species and wildlife then then that's really that's really uh, the, the sort of the, the hope and the message that that are carried with these tours. They they're really important, and um, yeah, this is kind of the the real icon of of, um, of Colombian primates. It was only described to science in 2015, and uh, and and as soon as it was described, it was immediately claimed as critically endangered. Its its distribution is just a, a dot on the map. Uh, and very, very few, um, other than the local uh, communities, very few people have seen this monkey. And uh, yeah, it's a real, it's a real pleasure and a delight to take people to to look for these. So I put this slide in really just to to give an indication of what the early days of of trying to figure out a primates tour in in deep deepest uh, Colombia is like. It was hard work. We um, we crossed rickety bridges like this one trying to find habitat and viable spots where we could take people and show people these uh these monkeys um thankfully we don't have to cross uh, streams and rivers like this anymore we've got some uh stable ground for you to to walk across um but it's just uh yeah just a fun slide to show uh the efforts that were that were put in at the start um and places that we went that, that Thankfully, we don't have to go to again, uh, or at least fall into into creeks again. Um, but it's the kind of place, you know, we're in we're in remote locations. It's the sort of place where a bike on a boat is just is just standard. Um, it's really out there. Very few people visit these places, and it's um, yeah. I personally just love getting off the beaten track. Um, it's it's one of the one of the great joys of travel. Um, and, and what better place to do it than uh, than Colombia? Um, just to wrap up, really, I've got a few slides just uh, showcasing some of Colombia's other wildlife and, and its other natural treasures. We're just scratching the surface with this, you know, 40 minutes. I mean, you can spend a lifetime in Colombia looking, and you'll you'll, you'll never you'll never tick off everything. Um, the orchid variety is is absolutely insane, from these wonderful large orchids right down to these micro orchids. Um, the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, which is this um, isolated mountain range just off the Caribbean coast, is isolated from the other Andean ranges in Colombia, is a real um, a real focus for uh, endemic species and is particularly world famous for its endemic birds. Uh, it's a wonderful place with a wonderful lodge. It's spectacular. Um, 
The travel in Colombia is really exciting. We often take prop planes to remote locations like the, uh, the Pacific coast. It's a great place for whale watching. And these can be added onto a tour if you are interested. Uh, we can do tailor-made extensions and things like that. Uh, if you're interested in seeing whales, uh, the, the season is, is roughly from June to, to October. And it's a great, um, yeah, it's a great spectacle. There's migrating humpback whales in, 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 in groups and there's a lot of activity, a lot of breaching. And the birding down there is fantastic as well. And there's more excellent lodges to stay in. There's iconic uh, Andean birds like Andean condor, and then other birds like this recurve billed bushbird, which were lost to science and only re recently rediscovered. Um, a wealth of amphibians like this endemic Magdalena glass frog, or the, the, the diminutive layman's poison frog. Um, incredible diversities and colors throughout the country. There's yet more primates. We can't show you every primate on the primate tour. There's just too many. There's too much ground to cover. Um, but one of the primates that I was really keen when I started uh, keen to see was this uh, golden back uakari, which is very found in remote locations. They're very difficult to see. Um, this is a, a photo that I'm really proud of because there's there's very few good photos of this uh, of this of this uh, species out there. So. Um, well, wow. it's it's just a just a wonderful place, and uh, we're getting more and more jaguar sightings in Colombia as well. It's really um, really exciting um, to get jaguars um, sort of potential in the country. This is in the eastern Janos Plains, and there's puma in there as well. So exciting times. There's wonderful culture. Like this is um, this is. Uh, an artifact from the Gold Museum of Bogota, which is one of the great museums of South America. Um, there's yet more places that you can uh, you could visit if you had more time. There's there's these wonderful ancient rock art, thousands of years old, that are in remote locations, and these locations will slowly open up um, given time. There's so much potential in Colombia, and did I mention the coffee? It's it's really really excellent. Um, you can do a coffee tasting tour uh, in, in the coffee region uh, for a nice chilled out uh, experience. And I particularly recommend it if, uh, like me, you like a, 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 a delicious cup of coffee. And yeah, it's really just a fun place to, to tour and, and um, to spend time. It's, um, as I say, it's, it's a colorful country, a welcoming country. The people are wonderful and friendly and you're bound to have a great time um, in Colombia. So that's, uh, that's, that's me and I hope you've, um, you've enjoyed the talk. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a real pleasure and I hope I've showcased Colombia in, uh, in 40 minutes. Robson, that, that was absolutely brilliant mate. Well done. Um, what an amazing country. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, I love my birds and I love my mammals and I just don't know what I'd, you know, what I'd target if I went out there. I'd, I'd probably need a few months. Um, it yeah. looks outstanding. Um, I, yeah. Rob, as you can imagine, we've got a, a whole host of questions, which I'll, I'll put to you very shortly. Um, but I do just need to do this poll. Um, as I said earlier, it does kind of set out the, the various yeah. trips that we offer. So if sure. anybody is interested in any of these, um, just let us know what one you might like some details on and we can send that through to you. Um, if, if you could perhaps just give us a very quick summary of, of each one, Rob, would that be possible? Yeah, no problem. So as I, as I mentioned, um, Colombia's rare mammals, um, that is an adventurous tour. The accommodation is, um, I think it's fair to say, would be substandard as compared to, to the majority of tours that Wildlife Worldwide offer. But the potential for to visit one of the, you know, one of the reserves with the highest concentration of spectacle bear in all of South America and look for the mountain tapir it's really tantalizing and there's some fantastic endemic primates to be thrown in along the tour as well columbia's birding highlights which is the tour that i didn't get a chance to really highlight on uh, on my talk that's really a full out birding tour it visits the sierra nevada santa marta which is the scene that we have behind us and uh, we target endemic and near endemic species um and yeah, it's for birders. It's 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 a it really it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's it's birding highlights of Colombia, uh, over uh, across about fifteen days, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the bird photography tour um, is 
again, it's, 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 it's just targeting some of the most spectacular endemic and, and colorful birds um, that Colombia has to offer. And there's, there's many, and we, but we really focus on hummingbirds and tanagers, toucans, and, uh, and some of the skulking species as well. And in particular, those helmet crests that I mentioned, the buffy helmet crests. And we also get the chance to, to photograph the green bearded helmet crest as well. So it's really exciting bird photography. And finally, Columbia's rare primates with Kate Humble. Um, again, we, 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 we have an opportunity to see some of the rarest and, and most spectacular primates on the planet. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic option. And, and for those that may, may be a little bit reserved about the accommodation on the Columbia's rare mammals, this is all en suite on the rare primates. And uh, yeah, it's a great tour visiting a range of different habitats. Um, I recommend all of them. <laughs> 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 and I, I guess, well, at the end of the day, if, if you can't make up your mind like me um, and you're happy to, to travel kind of independently, then there's always tailor-made options where we can, you know, pick and choose from the various trips and, and put together just, you know, absolutely whatever you want, really. Um, so, so that's always worth keeping in mind, isn't it? So, so you know, absolutely. anybody can give us a shout about that. Absolutely. Um, that, that, is, that is really super, Rob. Um, thank you. Um, I do, as I said, I've got a load of questions for you, so I, I hope you're ready for this. Yeah, um, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> shall, shall we do it? Right, the first one up is from Jane and, and John. Um, they wanted to know what lens size you were using for your bird pics, uh, particularly at the start. Um, yeah, it, it, is a 400 mil sufficient or do they need to go above that or? Yeah, so all of those, all of those pictures were taken on a lens, um, is a Canon lens, it's the one to 400 um, lens, but I also, I, I have with it a a three quarter frame cropped um, camera. So it's the, um, yeah, it's, it's, it adds a little bit extra to the, to the lens. So ultimately I'm um, fully extended. I'm about 560 mil equivalent. Um, you don't need a 600 mil or an 800 mil lens. Um, when we're in these hummingbird gardens and tanager gardens, we can get very close to our subjects. Um, it's a bit harder when you're out on a forested trail and we don't have, you know, we don't have birds coming to feed us. Um, it, it's harder to work with, uh, with a, say, a 400 mil lens in those situations. But, you know, you're going to get good photos. And as long as you're happy and content taking photos uh, of the most spectacular birds in the world, then you're going to have a good time, yeah. uh, no, no matter what gear you're carrying. <laughs> And Rob, um, Moira asked um, whether there'd also be the opportunity to photograph some of the orchids, some of the butterflies and, and so forth. But presumably, you know, that, that, that's, you know, that's not going to be a problem, is it? it, it you're going to look at everything, really. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, with, with the photography tour, we're often in, in, in these lovely gardens and reserves and we'll be spending lots of time in these reserves. So you can focus on on hummingbirds and once you've had your fill of hummingbirds you can start looking around the the gardens themselves which are full of orchids out on the forested trails there'll be lots of opportunities for orchids and uh and and butterflies i just you know packing it all in into 40 minutes is just impossible yeah, it's sure. uh pound for pound it's probably the, the most biodiverse country in the world and um yeah it's this you can you, you know you can uh, you can focus on various different subjects on on the photography tour for sure. Brilliant. No, oh, on that same trip, Rob, um, can you remind us what the name of that lodge was? Uh, the, the super lodge with the thermal pool, um, where you recommended sure. having a, a cold beer at the end of the day. Absolutely, yeah. It might, one of my favourites in in all of Colombia. It's Hotel Termales del Ruiz, and it's in the central uh, central Colombia. Brilliant. Okay, super. Obviously, that's all detailed in the, the itineraries and stuff, isn't it? So um, it is, yeah, it people is. can have a look at that. Um, with regard to the bears, Rob, what, what kind of range would you really, you know, kind of realistically expect to see them at? Would you, would you suggest? Are we talking about scope views, binocular views? Are we talking 20, 30 yards? You know, what, what, what if, if yeah. we are lucky enough to see them, what, what kind of um, sure. range um, would you expect? Well, in my experience, uh, when, when we get a sighting, we can get um, quite close, actually. Um, we we carry telescopes with us, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But when when we've had telescope views, um, they're often sort of filling the frame of the scope. Mm -hmm. um, 
I've had a few occasions where we've actually, in the early morning, we've come across bears on the road and we've, we've managed to get very close. So, um, you know, just viewing them from the car, um, from, from literally from meters. Obviously you do get sightings where you, you have, we're in a vast landscape, so you may see them um, across the valley in, in a scope. Um, yeah. It really just depends on, on you know, on, on, on the luck and the circumstance, but it is possible to get quite close. And often when you, when you get a sighting, you can sort of reposition yourself and, and, and get a little closer. Uh, super. I mean, I guess the ultimate thing what we're, what we're looking for here is to be able to observe these animals in, in, you know, in their natural habitat, just behaving completely normally, you know, not not threatened Absolutely. at all. And I, I know that's exactly this, the, the sighting that you had with Kate um, last Absolutely. year uh, Absolutely. With, with the cubs and stuff, which was which was just remarkable. Um, you also was it on that occasion that you saw puma as well, or, or was that an, another time? Um, Claudia, um, my my partner, she saw a uh, a puma that day. <laughs> Uh, Kate and I sadly we missed out. Um, um, Claudia was in 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 the reserve with some other clients, and and she was leaving the reserve, and on the way out um, they saw a puma um, from the car within meters. Um, Kate and I managed to find the print of the puma, uh, <laughs> but sadly not the puma itself. <laughs> that's still pretty good going. Yeah, not too bad. Oh, yeah, wow. it, then that's a that, that's a real chance yeah. sighting they're not no, they're course. not seen regularly at all uh, no, but no. You, you, as i say with the with the bird photography and it's it, it, it's the same for all these tours there's always a surprise along the way yeah. you you never know i mean it could be an onsia it could be an ocelot could be jaguarundi you know these species are all possible in these forested uh, uh sort of cloud forest uh, reserves so you never know what it might be uh, the, the range of mammals possible is insane you know it really is you know when, when you yeah. look at the list and stuff for columbia uh it it's mind-boggling it is padded uh, out by quite a few bats so if you, if you know, <laughs> is, is that there's, right there's yeah. quite a few bats on that list <laughs> there's <laughs> always bats everywhere yeah. <laughs> i think they, they make up a, a quite a high proportion of the world's mammals don't they generally yeah, i can't remember what it is but um no, it's, I think those those kind of mammals are only going to get more and more reliable as, as people like you go out into the field and, and find these sites and stuff and uh, can get so, a better yeah. understanding. So. We hope so. We've got we've got other, you know, there's more exciting species that, um, that we're, we're looking to find reliable locations for, like mm -hmm. giant armadillo and, and others. And, um, you know, Colombia really has it all. And, and yeah, as I say, that there are there are lots more opportunities um, that we're, yeah. you know, once travel opens up and once we can get back out in the field regularly, um, there'll be more opportunities um, and we're, we're, you know, we're, we'll, we'll be gladly looking for them. That's fantastic. Re really exciting stuff, Rob. I I've got a question here just uh, in respect to the mountain tapir site uh, yeah. and, and that walk. You, you, you mentioned that it's uh, about a three hour walk. Do, do you know what kind yeah. of distance we're looking at there? Approximately? It's, we're not covering, uh, we're not covering vast distances. I uh, I don't know. I don't know the specifics. Um, I would say it's probably somewhere in the region of eight kilometers, six to eight okay. kilometers. Uh, yeah. It's it's it never gets too steep. It's a it's a gentle gradient, uh, slightly uphill on the way up, obviously, and, and down on the way back. Um, it's rutted in sections, so you need to be reasonably um, steady on your feet if you know. You can take walking poles, of course, mm -hmm. um, but if you're not steady on your feet, then I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but anyone who's who's used to going out walking every every weekend um, and you know is 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 reasonably fit, I think it's absolutely it's not an fine. issue. Yeah. yeah, and and the accommodation uh, both there and uh, at the bear site. I mean, mm -hmm. you've said that uh, it's shared bathrooms and stuff, but yeah depending on the group the dynamics of the group and stuff that you know there is potential for for people to have their own rooms and stuff couples and stuff we just can't guarantee it in advance can we so you just right. have to be prepared that there may be um you know yeah we a chance you have to share so we time we time those visits um in in on midweek um uh, days that avoids um some weekend visitors um they tend to tend these reserves tend to get more local visitors at the weekends Mm -hmm. That means that there's often there's very few people in the, in these lodges when we visit. So we often kind of um, have the run of the place. But that, again, as you say, there's no guarantees. We just we do our best to accommodate people as comfortably and um, 
as privately as 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 is possible. Um, yeah. yeah. No, no, they, they, they look in, incredible. And, and, you know, to be seeing those species, I, I quite frankly, I, I'd, I'd sleep on the ground for that um, <laughs> in the jungle. Um, uh, I think we're probably getting towards the, the end of them, uh, Rob. I, I can see a couple more have come in here, um, but we, we can always get back to them tomorrow. I, I know that people probably want to get on with their evenings. Um, Elaine did just ask if you could remind us what the species was that was first described in 2015. The primate, that was, that yes. was the, the Kakita titi which yeah. is the, the species I highlighted at the end there, which is the remote um, primate that really spurred us to, to get these primate tours going. Yes, so, yeah. Good, good. No, I, I, I stay clear of trying to pronounce that one. So uh, th thank you for, for helping me out with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just a one or two very quick ones. Uh, Paul Cottis, who's, who's going to hopefully be traveling with you, um, I think it's either later this year or next year, uh, has asked if there's a good uh, lightweight bird book that you'd recommend for Columbia? Yes, yeah, so um, the one I'd recommend you, you look for is called The Field Guides to the Birds of Columbia, and it's authored by Miles McMullen, uh, who's an Irish chap who lives out in Columbia. It's a, it's a compared to some of the, um, Steve, like the Steve Hilty, there's a new Steve Hilty book out, which will be the definitive Field Guide to the Birds of Columbia, but it's, it's weighty, it's a tome. It's one for the bus, whereas if you want to take one out in the field with you, it's the Miles McMullen. You're looking for either edition two, which I think is very hard to find for less than 100 quid these days, or edition mm -hmm. three, which I think you can find for 50 quid. It is expensive, um, uh, but there's no getting around that. Failing that, we do try and keep a store of, of books uh, in Colombia. Uh, if anyone turns up and they didn't manage to get their hands on a, on a copy, we can, we can often, if, if we're told in advance, we can help out. Thanks, Rob. I mean, there's obviously a lot of birds there to, to cover, isn't there? Um, but well. presumably, obviously, the guide, I know you lead some of our trips, but we do have uh, other naturalists, obviously, uh, that you work with in Colombia, uh, yeah, that lead yeah. them from time to time. But whoever's leading, you would expect them to, to have the field guides and to have a scope and everything oh, as well. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Goes yeah. without saying. Yeah, yeah absolutely. They're, they're, the, the guides that we work with um, are, are amongst the best uh, birding and naturalist guides in Colombia. Uh, bilingual they speak excellent English they're very hot on their vocalizations so the uh, the birding tour for example we work with a couple of guys one of which is a chap called Hernan Arias and the other is Jose Castaño as well we've, we've done some tours with they're you know they're next level birders um, yeah abs absolutely just just hot as they come and finally, this is, is this is kind of the, the million dollar question, really, Rob, which we um, we, we get uh, understandably with, with most destinations that we cover. Um, yeah. Any idea where, when Colombia may open up, possibly? Uh, I don't know how things are progressing out there in terms of the, the vaccine yeah. rollout and stuff. Yeah, well, we're hopeful. Um, Colombia started its uh, vaccine um, program. Um, the signs are good. Um, we're certainly not in, you know, we're not struggling like other South American countries. Um, Colombia seems to have fared very well, actually, um, in, in, in sort of more recently. Um, so I'm hopeful that, you know, given uh, we need we need both governments to to, to say, you know, to give a green light. So fingers crossed. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that we may be able to get some tours going at the end of the year and certainly by 2022 if not you know where, where you know where will we be as a travel industry i'm not sure <laughs> yeah let, let's keep our fingers crossed eh? fingers crossed rob i think on that note we, we should wrap things up um it was an outstanding talk thank you so much for you know um spending the evening with us and and giving us such a, a detailed account of, of columbia um thanks dan with, yeah, with real some... pleasure super comments on here which I'll, I'll share with you later uh there's already demand for a, a giant armadillo trip <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah i've got some other mammals uh, I've, I've got some other mammals don't don't, don't mention them don't. <laughs> thanks everyone we'll, we'll stitch for ourselves joining. up yeah Lovely. thank you and uh, thanks rob and thank you everybody um we, we do have another talk tomorrow uh, lunchtime just on finland that will be with brett just covering the the boreal predators trip again uh, in a bit more detail but uh no thanks ever so much and uh, all the best Cheers, Thank Rob. You. Thanks, Dave. Take care.